Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about another QNAP new release for 2020, maybe 2021. Today I want to talk about the brand new QGD3014 16PT. And you're right, that is an awful name. So let's just get that out of the way early doors. Horrible name, I'm just going to call it the 3014 for the rest of this video. Now, yes... That name is remarkably all over the shop, but much like any product ID from any technological brand anywhere in the world, generally those model IDs mean a lot. And this 301416P responds to the fact that this is a very, very diverse device as far as QNAP model IDs go. This is a new release in their NAS and Switch combo series. I don't know if you guys have seen it. We talked about the Guardian uh, around about a year and a half ago to two years ago. This is kind of like the third main entry into that series where there's a series of devices. Each of them are combination NAS and switch devices bolted together into a single solution. And a number of us that take advantage of network attached storage in our home or business environment will be all too familiar with the idea that the minute you introduce a NAS into your home or business environment, you're invariably going to need a switch, largely because any of the routers you buy for your home or business, you know, uh, your ISP or you buy one privately, routers have generally only got about four LAN ports on them. And once you've attached maybe one PC, maybe a NAS, and then you've got your internet, so you've got your WAN getting taken up in some cases if it's not a separate one, you're running out of ports. A number of you will buy a switch. Now this device, is a PoE and NAS combo. It combines a power over Ethernet that is a switch, that is a switch that delivers power through each of the Ethernet ports which can be used to power devices, primarily security devices like these, cameras, but of course there's speakers and other alarm systems too, as well as this one enclosure also having inside a four bay Intel Celeron powered NAS. This is very, very interesting because for me, this is the most powerful form this series has taken. It's not the fastest. The fastest is the second gen, the 1602, which features a myriad of different bandwidths. This is centered almost primarily as a surveillance application with lots of NAS stuff put on top. Whereas we've seen from this series so far in the 1600p being um, a little, trying to be a middle ground, and then the second gen being a much more powerful NAS and switch, this is a much more powerful switch and NAS. Now, again, we've used up a couple of minutes already without even going into detail, so let's just cram, cram straight into it. Now, on the switch side of things, it has a 16 PoE plus ports at 30 watts each, and those ports also um, derive from a total of 140 watts total utilization, so although each of them can go up to 30 watts it has to be noted that if you can only get 140 watt out of the whole thing the majority of cameras like these i've got on the table uh two or three of which are either poe or mains powered between them and i've got loads more over there poe cameras will generally not use that full 30 watt unless you are using a real high grade enterprise like an axis that has smart capabilities or like one of those eight sensory devices now on top of those 16 um, RJ45 PoE Plus ports, there is also two SFP 1GB ports, but these are combo ports used in unison with two of those RJ45, so it's still a 16 port device. And this has its own switch management. It is a managed switch. You are talking things like um, lag management. You are talking about uh, quality of service. You're talking about um, loop detection. You're talking about user parameters. Um, POE scheduling. It is a smart managed switch with all of the benefits, uh, again, including a QUNet switch, QNAP's own software that you can access remotely via the internet or the network or directly, uh, and you can interact with it and manage your switch appropriately on the fly. And there's lots of automated systems as well that can protect you and your connected users and stuff like ACL and uh, uh, prevention from DDoS and stuff like that all rolled into that um, application. But again, that is half of the system. That is half of it. The other half is the NAS side. Now the NAS side, this four bay, and by four bay there isn't two and a half this time. These are four 3.5 inch SATA bay. So each one supporting up to the latest 18 terabyte hard drives from companies like Seagate, Ironwolf and WD Red. 
this four bay with obviously appropriate raid configuration support in raid zero raid one raid five raid six raid ten um also arrived with two m2 ssd slots as well inside they are sata not nvme but that still means that you can install a couple of four tbs in there which can be used for raw storage or of course caching internally of the system this isn't a qts hero device it doesn't have the oomph apparently for that so this does utilize traditional ext4 um, qts from qnap and all the applications and services that we've talked about in other videos and of course um, it does have its own dedicated network port as well which is quite interesting because although the NAS can communicate with the switch internally with the applications. The NAS has its own dedicated 2.5 GBE ports, two of them, which again can be link aggregated. Now, it has a lot of the key QNAP um, features and functionality in terms of hardware. It has um, audio in and out, and it has USB 3 ports, three of them, as well as two HDMI ports that can be used for standalone services or surveillance. Now in terms of surveillance, it's worth highlighting that of course, this device supports QVR Pro and a bunch of those myriad applications that it arrives with. And thanks to a quad-core CPU, the Intel J4125 Celeron, uh, which is a quad-core 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz. And it's got embedded graphics and support of DDR4 memory with eight gig by default over two slots so dim. The result is, that this supports pretty much all of the QUTS applications that you want in that EXT4 system. You are talking about virtualization station, you are talking about QVR Pro, you're talking about um, hybrid um, hybrid backup sync 3, you are talking about uh, QMaggy, you are talking about file station and Q search and Q filing, you are talking about the gamut, the entire array of QNAP applications are supported on this on the NAS side with a bunch of it largely benefiting the switch side as well so you can have this great internally um, composed system that let's be honest weirdly looks like it arrived in a 1970s or 80s radio uh, boxing there of what originally what cd players look like look like it's quite a weird design isn't it let's not walk away from that conversation when i first saw this i didn't know what it was i think it's a very ambitious um, idea in terms of design. I know it's not going to please everyone. I quite like it, but I know my attitude towards design is um, questionable in the extreme, so don't take my compliment as much to go along with there. But this does look like a very, very interesting system and continues the logic of those combo switch and NAS systems. So again, you've got your KVM there with a keyboard, video, mouse, and HDMI monitor for you to have the standalone system using the NAS software, but you've also got all those PoE ports that you can attach multiple cameras in your network environment, each of which is controlled by QVR Pro, either by the client application or by the HDMI user interface and that great um, standalone setup there. Now, both systems do run off the same PSU. They both run off a 250 watt PSU. However, they do run parallel so for example if the nas has a firmware update or the nas needs to restart for one reason or another with you your network environment or your instituting changes in applications the switch will not be powered down the switch is um, still connected and it will still run independently and that works both ways and it's very important that both these systems are parallel i know a number of you aren't as keen on the idea of your NAS and your switch running off a single power connector. And that's something I'm surprised QNAP don't really address in a follow-up version that has uh, two PSUs. But I can imagine that becomes very complex and then it makes it very, very difficult to maintain that price point. Something, unfortunately, we do not know on this device right now. I mean, to case in point, you are talking about effectively this. You're talking about a NAS, this is a 6-bay NAS here, so imagine this is the 4-bay, this is the TS653D, so imagine the TS453D with 2.5 GBE, with USBs, HDMI, all that, and a 4-bay RAID storage system, all of that, and then another PoE switch on top. This is an 8-port PoE switch, imagine two of these, on top of that, so all of that in a single package, not dotted around, not lots of different power cables, it's one solution that manages to factor all of those in at the same time. And its ability to support 
multiple cameras from big expensive brands like Rear Link to the more affordable ones. I'm uh, sorry, uh, big expensive brands like Axis, I should say, and more affordable ones like Anker, Rear Link, Edimax, Hick Vision, that sort of thing. There's a wide range of camera support. And with a lot of QNATS applications, and again, QU Net Switch, um, uh, and the ability to install uh, VMs within the switch, you can use a lot of third party stuff like OpenWRT or PF Sense can be deployed on this as a VM, as well as a VM within the NAS system as well, if you choose. This is a very, very contained system, but it doesn't have to be just that. You can utilize it as the central point in your surveillance system on multiple sites. So if you have multiple office locations and you want to have a centralized surveillance platform like this device, the 3014, and have multiple other ones, you can use um, QUWAN to centralize that uh, storage of all the data from multiple camera sites as well as synchronize as well in the safest possible way while at the same time not overburdening your bandwidth on those uh, locations and then affecting things like VoIP, affecting things like mainline uh, VM servers and stuff like that. It's intelligently managed and that's very important here. But this is all we know about this device right now. I hope we see it before the end of the year and I am looking forward to unboxing one because I think it's a very quirky little design there. It has internal fans, it has internal cooling. The front there, um, the left hand side has got those four drive bays inside there, each of which are lockable. Um, it's got that covering panel, but it's click and load in design. And the other side's got a nice arrangement of LEDs. It's got the USB port on the front as well. So for one touch backups and stuff like that, I'm quite keen on how this looks. But again, I'm not a man whose design um, aesthetic choices you should trust. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Do stay tuned for follow-ups on this device and more QNAP new releases being announced right now. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more. Visit the links in the description to learn more about today's products. And I will see you next time.